I can't wait for this. Ronnie is with Rob. Ronnie, wow, congratulations. What a comeback from 16-14. Yeah, I, I, to be honest with you, for three days I've just been trying to look for a cue action where I can hit the ball sort of straight, half straight, you know what I mean? It was just like, it's like a golfer just being in a rough every time off the tee and you just got to like chip it out, chip on the greens, try and find something from somewhere. And I've, I've been trying to do that for like, I don't know, like 15 days now and it's just, it gets tiring in the end because, you know, you just want to just be able to just find a little slot where you can just strike the ball and you know you know where it's sliding nicely but me it's like, it's like a seesaw you know it's like it's going all over the gaff and you know, and I'm watching him queue up and he's just got the perfect setup the perfect stance he's locked in rock solid don't look like he's going to miss and I'm like I'm having to play that for three days so I just I just tried to make the score look respectable because you know um I was just you know you, you, you can see by some of my play it was it wasn't great you know but it was a tremendous position to come back from. We're used to seeing him as the comeback king, but this was your turn to do it to him. Yeah, well, I started standing. I started to get my left hip a little bit nearer the table, so it kind of felt me a little bit more engaged with the table. So I, f I, f I thought there's no point looking for a cue action there at 16, 14, you, you, you're a million. So I thought just try and stand a little bit closer to the table and that, that kind of helped my timing out a little bit. I was still hitting them fat, thick. And, and cutting across it and scooping it. But I just thought, you know what, as long as I'm getting a decent connection, then I've, you know, I've got a half a chance of the ball going in the hole, you know? So, um, but yeah, it was, it was just all, that was, I got lucky really, I suppose. Well, some luck, but I mean, you played so well in those last few frames. How satisfying to beat the man who denied you the sixth title in 2014? To be honest with you, I'm just more interested in the cue action, you know, I'm looking at the cue action, I'm thinking, you, you, if you can get a cue action, then you've got half a chance, you know, like whoever you play, you know, um, and even if I did have a good cue action, then, you know, it'd still be a tough match against Mark, because, you know, you just drive him to play better. I think I kind of just dragged him down, really, to be honest with you, to my level. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think like all players would be the same, like all golfers and snooker players are the same. We, we just want to find the perfect swing, the perfect action. And if you got that, then, you know, you just enjoy playing. But when you ain't got good action, mate, it's, it's proper tough grasp. But how much are you now relishing being back in the World Championship final? It's the ultimate match. No, like I said, it all goes back to the cue action. If you can find that little slot where you're, you're queuing the ball nicely and you're going through the middle, you know, that's snooker, you know, all this sort of World Championships and all that. To me, it's, it's, it's you know, you ask any snooker player, any any golfer, they'll say the same. You know, it's all about the action. If you've got a decent action, then you, you'd enjoy playing in the basement somewhere on your own. You know, it's just it's just a beautiful game played beautifully. But when it's not being played beautifully, it's it's, it's a nightmare. But snooker's about great stories as well, and this is your chance I to join Reardon and Davis. I believe it's about the cue actions. You know what I mean? I'm I'm not buying into these stories and world titles, and it's all about. I'm into cue actions. You know, I bought the Joe Davis book and I started reading it. And, and if you want to go and read it yourself, he'll tell you it's all about the cue action. And he's the father of snooker. And as far as I'm concerned, he talks the same language as me. And I just I need to get a cue action from somewhere. I, mean, I might go on Amazon later and see if, it, see if Bezos can deliver me one tomorrow. <laughs> they're, they're quite good on their, uh, their ASAP on their deliveries, isn't they? Yeah, maybe not quite that quick. Just finally, will you enjoy it, do you think, tomorrow? Well, if I can find a cue action from somewhere, <laughs> then, then I'm going to love it. But if I can't find a cue action, it's just going to be like more like in the fairway, chip out, see what you can do, you know? It's all about the cue action, mate. You know, um, everything comes, cue action first and everything else is just a bonus. Well, even if you're not quite looking forward to it, we are. Well done tonight. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Other online suppliers are available. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I might be looking for one myself. I, have to... <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think it's all right. <laughs> I mean, to turn around so that, that deficit, to, to, to play as well he did near the end. So um, that's what we've been doing wrong all this time. We haven't been getting our hip closer to the table. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Is, um... But look, it is about stories. Rob is absolutely right. It's, it's an incredible mm. story. It's oh. an incredible tale, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's, and he's turned it round. I mean, you know, he has been, basically, he's been um, Lex Luthor to Superman for the last couple of years. <laughs> he's been knocking him out, Mark Selby. So it, it's a fantastic result for him, 17, 16 to turn it round. He'd never beaten him in a crucible mm. before. So he'll be ready for, for the final tomorrow and looking forward to it. But the, two, the whole thing today has just been yeah. fantastic snooker from start to finish. Yeah, it's going to be box look, office, isn't it, Ken? 
Absolutely, yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, you know, I mean, he is box office, no matter what you say. I mean, his, his interviews aren't box office by any stretch of the matter, but his snooker is box office, and that's the most important thing. And I think, overall, snooker was the winner, uh, you know, today from both semi-finals. Just fun. absolutely brilliant. I mean, the way O'Sullivan played, that last frame between Wilson, and what a final that we have in store yeah, as well. You know, absolutely. a young pretender against, uh, you know, a five-time champion trying to equal Steve Davis and Ray Raiden's record. And, uh, you know, both of them have got to recover and come back tomorrow and start all over again after two, both had 17-16, so mm. be interested in opening session. Yeah, it's just an incredible tale to think that Ronnie's got an, another opportunity to get another world title. Yeah, I, I want to see what Alan Manic Manus's prediction is for the <laughs> final. Because he's, got, he's had two of them correct already. Mystic McManus, <laughs> oh, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Now how we're calling him. <laughs> you, yeah, I've got a few runners at Kempton. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's hear from Mark Selby. He's with Rob. Well, Mark, we're used to seeing you be the one mount the comebacks against all sorts of opponents, including Ronnie, but it was his turn tonight. Yeah, the last three frames, I didn't really get much of a chance, apart from right at the end, uh, Ronnie missed the ball and I had a chance to clear up, and I felt great. I felt like I was going to clear up. Just played a poor position of shot on the green. Then after that, played some good safety shots, and Ronnie just obviously kept getting out of a minute in them. But during the match, I felt like it was a little bit disrespectful the way he played. Every time I put him in a snook, he just got down and hit the balls 100 mile an hour and could have gone anywhere. So I don't know whether he was just in that frame of mind, but I just felt it was a little disrespectful to me at the table. But last three frames, he played great. I got no complaints. So you're almost feeling as though he was being reckless. Not reckless, just obviously disrespectful to me. I mean, rather than obviously like sometimes like if, you, if you've got no shot, you get down and you can just hit him as hard as you can and hope you try and flute one. But every time I had him in a snooker, he just seemed to do it. Even if like, he had a chance to roll on a ball, he'd just come off the cush. So I just think it's disrespectful to the game and also disrespectful to me in that particular match. And, and just finally, do you feel perhaps that you had him under such pressure at 13-9 and you, you just, he just found a way back in at the end of that session? Yeah, looking back at it now, now I've lost the match. I felt like I probably missed the boat a little bit in the third session. As you say, 39, I had a chance to go 14-9. Uh, but even then, like the long red I've played in the in the corner pocket, in the green pocket, I'm just about to play and he's put his cue next to the seat and then stood up in his chair while I'm playing the shot instead of just sitting down right in my eye line. And obviously people just don't do that, you see. But, uh, you know, whether, whether he was trying to, to do mind games or not, I don't know. But uh, obviously Ronnie's Ronnie and he does him things. Thanks for talking to us, Mark. See you next season. Cheers, mate.